This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 112. Have you ever had to give a speech at school or maybe a talk somewhere else? Well, sometimes it feels really stressful and it's, it's really difficult sometimes to get our words right and to say powerful words. But every word you speak, no matter whether you think it's good or bad or helpful or unhelpful, your words are powerful. Every single one of them. So how can we make sure that every word we say is encouraging and loving? In 1940, with the British nation facing the threat of imminent invasion, Winston Churchill became Prime Minister and delivered a series of rousing speeches by radio which rallied the spirits of the people. His words have become legendary. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall never Surrender, he said, and let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Churchill's words sing in a way that English language leaders and politicians have tried unsuccessfully to match ever since. Nevertheless, for all of us, words are powerful. Your words are powerful. With kind and encouraging words, you can change a person's day or even their life. From Proverbs 10 The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning. Whoever conceals hatred with lying lips and spreads slander is a fool. Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. Speak words of love. Your words have the power to bring great blessing. The mouth of the good person is a deep, life-giving well. But words can also do a great deal of harm. The mouth of the wicked is a dark cave of abuse. Words have the power to destroy relationships. Hatred starts fights. On the other hand, they have the power to heal relationships. But love covers over all wrongs. Love pulls a quilt over the bickering. Control of the tongue is vital. When words are many, sin is not absent. But the wise hold their tongues. Abraham Lincoln said, It's better to be silent and thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. Throughout this passage, the writer of Proverbs contrasts the mouth of a fool with the mouth of the righteous. One speaks words of hatred, the other words of love and wisdom. Words of hatred lead to violence, dissension, ruin and spreading slander. Words of love are a fountain of life. They cover over all wrongs and are choice silver. If someone has offended you, don't return the offence. It's said that holding a grudge is like letting someone live rent-free in your head. Instead, return hatred with love. Speak well of the other person, even behind their back, and you may find that your love puts an end to the bickering and heals the relationship. Lord, help me today to control my tongue, to speak only words of love and life. Help me always to respond to any wrong committed against me with words of love. New Testament from Luke 21 He replied, Watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Everyone will hate you because of me. But not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. 
Each day, Jesus was teaching at the temple, and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Speak words given by Jesus. Jesus did not have a degree or any formal training. Although he knew the scriptures back to front, he never went to theological college. Yet his words and language about God were so powerful that in his early thirties he was able to teach every day in the temple and draw in the crowds. The words of Jesus are the most powerful words ever uttered. He spent his days in the temple teaching. All the people were up at the crack of dawn to come to the temple and listen to him. The words of Jesus are eternal. Jesus contrasted his own words with the temporary things that the disciples could see around them. Jesus prophesied about the coming destruction of the temple and of Jerusalem, which occurred in AD 70. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. 2,000 years later, more and more people around the world are affected by the words of Jesus. The teaching of Jesus is widely acknowledged to be the greatest teaching of all time. We've advanced so much in science and technology. Yet, in the last 2,000 years, no one has ever improved on the moral teaching of Jesus. They are the greatest words ever spoken. They're the kind of words you'd expect God to speak. Jesus warns about deceptive words. He says, Watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. Jesus has told us to love everyone, our neighbours and even our enemies. Now he warns us that although we are to love everyone, we will also be hated by all. If you are persecuted, you are to see this as an opportunity to be a witness. On these occasions, Jesus says, Make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Not only are the words of Jesus powerful, but he also promises to put powerful words in your mouth. So much of the language Jesus uses is the language of love and relationship. It has to do with your heart and your prayer life. He says, But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dull by parties and drinking and shopping. Don't be weighed down with the anxieties of life. Be always on the watch and pray. Lord, please give me words and wisdom for every occasion. Help me to develop the language of love and prayer and to speak powerful words in your name. Old Testament from Joshua 1 and 2 I will give you every place where you set your foot. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Lord your God will give you rest. Speak words of God. Joshua succeeds Moses. Moses was described as the servant of the Lord, and Joshua takes up the same title from God. It's a title that was also borne by the prophets Paul and Jesus himself. To be a servant of the Lord is now a blessing that all Christians enjoy. But every blessing God gives you comes with a measure of responsibility. Take that responsibility seriously. Joshua is to pay particular attention to the words God has spoken. He is to obey them, speak them, meditate on them day and night and put them into practice. Fill your mind with God's truth, even in those wakeful moments of the night. This will affect your thinking. Your thoughts will be thoughts of truth, freedom, love, victory and peace. God also underlines this by speaking to Joshua directly, encouraging and strengthening him with two key promises. First, there is the promise of God's peace. 
I will give you every place where you set your foot. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. The Lord your God is giving you rest. For us now, that rest comes through Jesus. Rest is not just putting your feet up and relaxing, but unburdening your troubles and having a deep sense of peace and security in your identity because of who Jesus is. The writer of Hebrews states that if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. And that day is a day made possible through Jesus. As Jesus himself promised, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Second, there is the promise of God's personal presence. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. This brings strength and courage. Do not be terrified. God does not tell us not to feel fear, but he does tell us not to give in to it. Do not allow fear to rob you of the blessings God wants to give you. He goes on, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Again, you now experience that promise through Jesus by the work of the Spirit. Jesus' last words before ascending to heaven were, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As Joshua comes under the authority of God's words, his own words carry power and authority. The people replied, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. If you hear and speak God's words, your words, like those of Joshua, will be powerful words. In case all this should lead to intensity, super spirituality, or self-righteousness, today's passage ends with a wonderful account of how God uses a woman involved in prostitution called Rahab. It is so like God to choose someone considered to be the lowest in society, to be an ancestor of Jesus and a hero of faith. This is an encouragement to us not to be weighed down by our past. As Joyce Meyer says, we all have a past. No matter how bad your past is, you can get past your past. God will give you a new beginning. He can use you greatly and give you a future. Lord, help me each day to meditate on your words, obey them and put them into practice and pass them on to others by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pippa adds, The verses in Joshua 1, 6-9 mean a lot to me. Being strong and courageous doesn't come that naturally. I'm not physically very strong. I can't bench press a thing. Faced with a difficult situation, I might be tempted to duck it or run from it. I find the repeated encouragement to be strong and courageous spurs me on. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that your words are always loving. Help me to speak only loving words today, to think before I speak, and to love everyone that I come into contact with. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.